video, I'm gonna show you how to make a super adorable popcorn bucket cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional cake decorator just outside of Philly. I've been decorating cakes since 2002. And on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. So I had a request to show how I make this popcorn bucket cake. I've made it a few times and I'm about to make a carnival cake. I already made it and I'm just filming the intro and I always, I always confess, but I already made it and I want to show, I ruined the whole thing when I do that. <laughs> anyway, I'm making a carnival cake with a popcorn bucket on the top and I wanna show you how I do that. And before we get into the video, I just wanna let you know that I designed my first free guide for you guys. It's a birthday cake design blueprint and it gives you a bunch of different ideas on how to design your birthday cakes and I will link that below. So let's get into the video. All right, so first I want to level and fill the cake. But I did, I want the popcorn bucket to taper at the bottom. So I did two six inches and one five inch. The five inch is gonna be the bottom and it's going to taper like a popcorn bucket. So I already started to level off the five inch and now I wanna do the six inch. These cakes, after I baked them, they were wrapped in plastic and placed in the freezer. Uh, I can link my videos on how I bake and freeze my cakes. And then this morning, I just took it out of the freezer, let it sit on the countertop to come to room temperature, and now I'm ready to um, level them and fill them. So I'm going to unwrap both and save the plastic. We're going to use the plastic to rewrap the cake. When I bake my cakes, they usually come over the, the top. So I take my scissors and just cut that the part that's sticking over the edge. I just cut that off before I level it off just because it's easier to level. Most people would say you don't overfill your pans, but I've been doing it like this. I've just been baking like this forever and this is how I do it. So after I cut those, I have this Wilton leveler. I love this. It has different notches on the side. So you could just squeeze in a little bit and then bring these rings to whatever notch that you want. So I like to do three from the top, hold it level, and saw back and forth to get the tops off. Take the tops, you can make cake pops with these or whatever, I'm gonna give them to the birds. And then to clean it up, I just like to take my scissors over the sink and just trim any parts that are hanging over the edge. Now you could do whatever size cakes that you want, but I like to do two of the same size and one of the smaller size so it tapers. You don't have to taper it. You can have all three of them the same size if you'd like. Now I have my turntable with a piece of non-skid pad. The non-skid pad helps prevent the board from sliding around. If I don't have the non-skid pad on here, when I'm, when I'm working with this, it'll slide all over the place. Now, I'm gonna build this upside down so it's gonna be the two bigger ones on the bottom and the small one on the top. I'm gonna to ice it, I'm gonna carve it and ice it and then flip it over. You'll see as I'm doing this, it'll, it'll start to make sense. So this is confetti cake. She wants vanilla buttercream icing as the filling, which I have some right here. So I'm just gonna take a little buttercream on my spatula and put it on the bottom of the cake board just so the cake sticks to it and it's not gonna move around. This is actually gonna be the top but we're gonna put it on the bottom to start. I have some simple syrup in this container here in this, in this squirt bottle. Simple syrup is an even mixture, a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar and water. So one cup of sugar, one cup of water, two cups of sugar, two cups of water. Put them in a pot, bring it to a boil, take it off and let it cool and then you can use it. It just helps keep the cakes a little more moist. And I like to spray a little bit on here. So not too much doesn't need too much. And I'm just putting it down and then I'm gonna fill with the icing. So take some vanilla buttercream and spread it around. 
just out to the edges. This is going to get carved, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And repeat the process. So now I'm going to spray both sides with the simple syrup. Place it on top. Make sure it's even. Press it down and put some more icing here. And then just spray the simple syrup on the top part, which is actually going to be the bottom, and place it on top. Now when we carve the cake, it's a lot easier to carve with the smallest part on the top. You'll see, but we're building it upside down, then we're going to flip it over. And then to make it a little neater, not necessary, but before I wrap it, just taking a spatula and smoothing the extra icing down. And then take the pieces of plastic that we used before and just wrap this up. Make sure the plastic is covering all of it and not like hanging off the bottom. So you don't want any cake exposed to the air. And wrap it around really tight. I'm gonna use the other piece and cover this side. And I'm not using perishable ingredients in my filling. So this is gonna be able to sit out at room temperature, probably until tomorrow, well, until I'm ready to carve it and ice it. You want it to sit out at least for a couple hours. I like to do overnight so the tears can settle down into each other and then you'll have less instances of air bubbles or issues going on with the cake. So setting this aside and then we will carve and ice the cake. All right, now this has been sitting out overnight at room temperature and I just wanna carve it before I crumb coat it. I have my turntable with a piece of non-skid pad on it like always. I'm just gonna unwrap the plastic and toss that. I have a five inch cake circle here. I actually had to trim it so it would be the size. It was a six inch circle because I don't have five inches, but I trimmed it so it would fit the size of the top cake, which is gonna be the bottom when we flip it over. I have a long serrated knife. So the knife is about as tall as the cake. Uh, this is a Cutco knife. You could use any knife uh, that's relatively sharp. And what I'm gonna do is, be sure I'm not in the way. I'm going to use this cardboard as a guide. I actually put a little icing on here so it doesn't slide around. And use this cardboard as a guide and I'm going to have the tip at the very bottom and I'm gonna have this part up against the cardboard. So I'm holding this down and getting it into the cake where I can get the tip at the bottom and this part up against the cardboard and just cut on an angle and it'll trim off the excess. So I'm sawing up and down gently on a slight angle and then I'll just remove whatever's cut. I like to rinse the knife off in hot water. It just makes it easier to glide through and do the same thing the whole way around. Okay, now you can see the basic shape and then I'm just going to refine the cut and just make it look a little more even the whole way around. Now that I don't have the extra pieces of cake there, I can really see the knife on the angle as I go around and just get rid of any of the excess. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now this part is a little extra, you don't have to do it. I just don't like when the cardboard circle shows at the bottom. So I'm gonna remove this one, the five inch one, and I cut one a little bit smaller. So when I put it on, it's a little bit smaller than the cake. And this is the one that I'm gonna keep on. So I have some candy melts, just some white candy melts in here that I just put in the microwave for about 45 seconds to melt them. And on the grease proof side, I'm gonna put some chocolate. Spread that around and then place it on top and make sure the whole way around that it's not sticking out anywhere. This way, when we ice the cake, 
You're not gonna see the cardboard when you flip it over and put it onto the cake board. It'll make sense as we keep going. And then I'm gonna let this set for about three minutes and then we can crumb coat it. All right, now this cardboard is attached and I have some American buttercream, a lot of white that I made. I said before, I can link my recipe for this below. I have a spatula. I have a pot of hot water and I have folded up paper towels and a bench scraper. So to put on the crumb coat, I'm gonna get a little bit, I, some people use an icing tip and just one fell swoop and just ice it. I don't do it that way. I just like to do it this way. I'm putting the icing, I'm starting at the bottom, pressing it against, making sure there's no air bubbles behind the icing. You wanna make sure the icing is pushed all the way against the cake or else you could get one of those blowout air bubbles forming. It's the most important part of icing these cakes. So just really pressing the icing onto the side of the cake, making sure no air is forming behind it. I'm gonna do the bottom row first. I'm trying to make it pretty even thickness the whole way around. And after the bottom is done, and then I'll come up to the middle and do the same thing. And then come up to the top. I'm gonna to let it come over the top a little bit. So you can see how the icing is covering the cardboard circle and you won't be able to see it when we flip it over. Now I'm taking my paper towel and the bench scraper. I'm going to wet the bench scraper. So I'm putting it in the hot water, heating up the metal and then wipe the water off. The metal is hot and the hot metal is going to help smooth the buttercream. So I wanna hold this in on an angle, not straight up and down, on an angle to contour to the shape and wipe it around. I'm gonna wipe off the excess buttercream in a separate bowl because this might have crumbs in it. And continue the process. Heating up the metal, wiping off the water, starting at the bottom, keeping it on an angle. Now this isn't going all the way to the top, that's okay. And we'll do another round where we lift it up. So at the bottom, I'm holding it on an angle using my left hand to turn the board. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a crumb coat. We're gonna cover this. So there's marks here and whatever. It's, it's, it's okay that it's not perfect. And then doing this on the top half. So I'm using this as a guide, putting it on an angle. And same thing, just turning it with my other hand, smoothing it out. Okay, that's pretty good. And now I don't want to get a bunch of icing on this cardboard circle. I just want it covering it. So I'm just going to basically scoop off the excess and put it back in the bowl. So I'm holding this on an angle and just scooping it off the whole way around. I'm using the cardboard as a um, guide that I'm laying the tip of the spatula on. And there is your crumb coat. So I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator and let the butter solidify and then take it out and put on the final coat. So it'll be in the refrigerator for at least an hour until I continue. All right, this has been in the refrigerator overnight and now I'm ready to do the other coating. Um, I went out yesterday, so I didn't do the second coating of icing right away. So I have room temperature buttercream icing and I'm just going to put a thicker layer of icing around, not too thick. So you want to make sure that you don't put a huge, you know, a really thick coat of icing around it, but just enough to cover up the imperfections in here. And do the same thing. Do a row around the bottom, around the middle, and around the top. And again, when you're on the top row, make sure it's sticking up over, over the top a little bit so we can smooth it out. And now to smooth this out, I have a long bench scraper because the short one is too short. This one I got on KCADS. I can link this below. I'm not affiliated with them. But this one will not fit in a pot, in a hot boiling pot of water. So what I do is get my tap water really hot, run it along the end, 
and then wipe it off. So I want to heat up this metal like we did before, wipe it off with a paper towel and smooth it out. Now same thing, I'm going to hold it on an angle to make sure I don't lose that angle that we cut into it. And I'm turning it with the bottom hand and smoothing it out, getting rid of the excess and repeating the process the whole way around. And that looks pretty good. So now to do the smoothing process, I explain this more in detail in how I ice a buttercream cake. So I can link that below so I don't make this too long. But I have a Viva paper towel. Viva paper towels don't have a pattern on them. That's why I like to use them. Um, some countries don't have these. So you may just have to use a regular paper towel and then try to smooth out the pattern. But you've got to find a paper towel that doesn't have a pattern on it. And you have to use a crusting buttercream. So I'm putting the paper towel up against it and just rubbing up and down with my fingers to remove any imperfections and going the whole way around the cake. And after I use my fingers, I'm just going to take my fondant smoother and do the same thing. So put the paper towel against the side and just go back and forth, pressing the icing against the cake, trying to remove any more imperfections. And again, I explain this a little more in detail in my other video. And now I just want to take off this icing at the top, which is going to be the bottom of the cake when we flip it over. So just holding it level, I have to scoop down here a little bit. And then using the board as a guide to hold this straight and getting rid of the excess icing. Trying to get a nice sharp edge. So I'm kind of scraping it and pushing it in rather than pulling it out. That way I keep a nice edge around the, around the bottom. So I'm coming in and up. Don't pull it out because then you'll distort the shape. Good. I'm just going to let this sit for about 10 minutes so the icing can crust and then I will do the final smoothing method. And now just for the final smoothing process, I take a sheet of, uh, you want food safe paper, like butcher paper or something like that, and just put it against the side, something that's smooth. Do the same thing that we did with the paper towel and just press the paper against the side of the cake. And that's really gonna remove any of the imperfections that the paper towel left in the cake. And this is all smoothed out. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator um, until I'm ready to decorate it. All right, now I'm gonna make the popcorn balls so they can stiffen. This is marshmallow fondant. I just put this in the microwave to soften it. And I have a little bit of Crisco. I'm gonna put it on the countertop here. And it, look, it's already starting to stick to my hands. So that's why I love Crisco. <laughs> so just start to knead this together. And now I wanna add a little Tylos powder to this because I want the popcorn balls to hold the, their shape. So sprinkling a little bit on there. That was about like a half teaspoon and just knead all that together. So now what I wanna do, I have a cookie sheet here that I just have a, um, a cake box lid on. I cut all the lids off my boxes when I box my cakes because they're so tall, you can't put a lid on them. And I like to save the lids for stuff like this. So. I just want to start making little balls. These are gonna be the popcorn balls. So just make, I, I don't wanna film all of this because it's literally going to take, <laughs> it's gonna take a while. I don't want it to be, this be, to be too long, but I probably need to make about 150 to 200 of these little balls. And I'm trying to make them pretty much the same size they're, I mean, they're not gonna be the same size. It just, it is what it is. <laughs> and actually, see these are starting to stick to the board. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of cornstarch on this lid. So now I'm starting all over. So I'm gonna make probably about 150 to 200 of these balls. Just rolling them in my hands, trying to make sure they're, they look as symmetrical as possible. Not a big deal if they don't and make a bunch of these. All 
All right, so when I fill up one of these, I'm still gonna finish the rest of this and make more little popcorn balls. But I'm just going to set this aside at room temperature, not in the refrigerator, just leave it out so the fondant can harden, so the tylos can stiffen up. So just setting these aside probably for about six hours and then we will continue. All right, now I wanna cut out the stripes. So I put, I'm gonna make the stripes on the bucket purple because she has a pastel theme to her cake, but usually popcorn buckets have red stripes. So whatever color you want. I have some marshmallow fondant here. I popped it in the microwave for about 10 seconds to soften it to make it more pliable. I wanna add a little more Tylos powder to this just so the shapes, the stripes will hold its shape. Now I measured my cake from the bottom, the, the popcorn bucket, from the bottom to the top and it was six inches. So I wanna cut the stripes a little bit longer than six inches, six inches so I can trim the stripes to fit the top. You'll see what I mean. But I'm gonna roll this out and make sure that it's at least six inches tall and then cut a bunch of stri strips out of the fondant. Rolling it into a log. And then flattening it out a little bit. Sprinkle down some cornstarch and roll it out. I like to tap a little bit of cornstarch on top so the non-stick rolling pin doesn't stick to it. And now I'm gonna roll it out this way first to make sure I get it to six inches tall. I have a little ruler here. So this is six inches here. And I want it a little more than six inches tall. And just roll it out long ways. Little tip here, if you find that you're getting air bubbles in your fondant, I like to take a needle tool and just poke the needle I try to drag it along the fondant and then just poke it through the bottom to pop the bubble. If you pop it on top, then you're gonna be, be able to see the hole in the fondant. And again, I have another cake box lid that I'm just going to have here so I could put the strips on there. Now I have this ribbon cutter. I can link this below. And what you do, you can unscrew the top part and it comes with all these little pieces in here, which you can put whatever you put in between the two discs is how thick your ribbon is going to be. I think this is good. I guess you just have to figure out how thick you want the, the strips to be. And then screw the top back on and then I'm holding both sides and I'm just going to cut a bunch of strips out. So I'm pressing down pretty hard and every time if you've been watching my channel, you know this. Every time I cut something out of the fondant, I take my fingers and I just run them along the edge just to smooth out any edges. And then I'm going to put that on top of the cake box lid and just do that for all the strips. I usually cut about three out at a time so I can smooth the edges. If I cut them all out without smoothing the edges, then the edges start to dry and get a little crusty. And crusty is a disgusting word, <laughs> but they get crusty. Sometimes I find that the fondant starts to stick to, to these discs, so I just take a paper towel and wipe all the fondant off so you get a cleaner cut. So now I want, I want these to sit out a little bit and, and just stiffen up just a little bit before I use them. However, from cutting them, they've lost their shape. So I had, this used to be a yardstick and I cut it in half. And I like to use this to make my strips straight. So I take one on either side and I just kind of go back and forth to make the strips straight. It just helps, I, I'm, I'm just sliding them back and forth just to get the shape back to them. Good, now they're all straight and I'm gonna set these aside to dry or to stiffen up a little bit while I stack the popcorn bucket on the cake. 
All right, now I want to stack this on top. I'm, I'm doing this as a top tier. If you're just putting this on a cake board, then you don't have to stack. I have a video on how I prepare a cake to stack. I can link that below and, and I just don't want this video to be too long. So I want to get this off of this cake board and this little, um, what is it, a spatula? Whatever it is. It's really thin right here. So I, I just take something thin like, like a, a, a knife, a sharp knife or something that you can just get underneath and start to lift the icing off of the board a little bit, just so it's not sticking so much. It'll be easier to lift the cake off if you just unstick it, if you will. <laughs> okay, now to get this off of the cake board, cardboard has little lines in it, you can see. So you want to put it down on the countertop. I let it hang off a little bit. Press my hand on the top and just press down to bend the cardboard. And then I can lift the cake off. Good, a little bit of the cake came off, that's okay. And I want to find what looks good from the front. This is just out of the refrigerator, so I'm not messing up the icing. And I feel like what looks the most symmetrical right here. So this is the front of my cake and I'm just gonna put this on top. Or you would just put it down on your cake board. Now, this is also in my stacking video. I just want to dowel this. If you're not on top of a cake, if you just put this on a cake board, you want to dowel it into the cake board as well. I sharpened a dowel here. Just cut it off and bring in the snips a little lower than the top, coming straight out and cutting the, the dowel. And then I have another dowel here that I use to countersink. Make sure it's going straight in the cake and not on an angle either way. So straight up and down, pressing it straight down. I'm take my hammer and hammer it down into the cake board. Take my other dowel, put it on top to countersink it all the way down into the cake board till it won't go any further. And now I have my container of some white buttercream and just so this doesn't dry out, I'm just going to put a thin coat of buttercream on the top. Doesn't have to be perfect because all the popcorn is going to uh, cover all of this. We just don't want any cake exposed. All right, now I'm gonna put the stripes on the cake. I have a wet paper towel with an X-Acto knife so I can wipe the X-Acto knife off. I have some Crisco to adhere the stripes to the cake. Crisco is very forgiving. So once I put the stripes on the cake, I can move them around if there's Crisco behind them. If I use water or piping gel, they're really gonna stick and I'm not gonna be able to move them. And I also have these angled scissors. That way, the, when the strips come over the top, I can cut them easily when the scissors are on an angle. To start, I wanna do a little purple, a thin purple strip around the bottom. So I did the same thing that I did with these strips. I rolled it, I rolled the fondant out into a long log and then rolled it out and used that strip cutter and cut a thinner strip. So adhere, to adhere this to the bottom, I'm just gonna take a little bit of shortening, uh, find the back of my cake where I put that little dot, which is right here. So I'm just gonna put a little mark here with the paintbrush so I know where the back of the cake is and just put some shortening around the bottom of the cake. And now I have my strip here, and I'm just gonna start at the very back and press this around the bottom of the cake. Where it meets in the back, I'm just gonna make a little mark with the X-Acto knife and then cut it and make the ends meet. Take your finger and press the strip against the cake and then what I like to do is get low. Usually when you put strips on cakes like this, they're not even. So I have this little palette knife and I just like to press down to make sure the strip is even all the way across. Since this cake is fresh out of the refrigerator, the icing is still solid and I'm not messing it up. So now I wanna find the front of my cake. Here's the back. So here's the front. I'm actually gonna turn it a little bit so I can see it. And I'm gonna to start to put the strips on. These are about eight inches long, so they're plenty long. What I wanna do 
I have my wet paper towel here so I can keep wiping this off. Cut the bottom so it's perfectly straight. And then I'm going to flip it over and put Crisco the whole way. So put some shortening all the way on the back from the bottom to the top. Starting in the front, place the bottom against that bottom strip and just pull it straight up using my thumb to press it against the side of the cake. Good, that looks pretty straight. Now I'm gonna take my scissors, I hope my arm's not in the way, <laughs> and use the top as a guide to snip it off. Okay, so I'm gonna put a top border around the top of the cake. It's gonna be a, a, a log that I roll out and put around. So I don't want this sticking out too far over the top. I pretty much want it even with the top of the cake. You don't want it too low, because you want the strip to be able to meet that top border. You will see what I mean. And do the same thing again. So cut the bottom of the strip so I have a straight line. So I'm just holding it straight. Make sure you're not cutting it on an angle. It's straight across. Put some shortening on the back. And now I kind of want them evenly spaced. So it's gonna be kind of like that there is a white stripe in the middle and then a purple stripe. So the white stripe in the middle is gonna be about as thick as the purple stripes. You could space them however far apart that you would like. And just try to look straight on, make sure you're drawing it straight up and it's not coming over to the side. Since this is tapered at the bottom, it's gonna be wider, a wider space at the top in between than at the bottom. Use your scissors and cut the top off. And then I'm going to go to the other side. So I'm going to keep going one side to the other till I get to the back because usually the pattern doesn't meet into the back. Now try to evenly space it. See how much space is in between the other one and make it even. Now since I have Crisco on the back, this, this white strip here is thinner than this white strip. Since I have Crisco on the back, I can peel it off and replace it. That's why I like using the Crisco. And now I'm gonna go back to the other side. Now, it looks pretty even all the way around and I get to the back and there's like a bigger space there. So you have to decide between two things. This is the back of the cake. I don't wanna say it's not as important, but usually the pattern doesn't match. So do I wanna leave a big space there or put another strip? And I think I'm just gonna put another strip just so there's not a huge space. The pattern will be off, but hey, it is what it is. On the bottom, my pattern matched in the back. So sometimes the cake gods are on your side. <laughs> Now you can kind of see the strips are coming a little bit over the top of the cake, right? That's what we want. So the top border is going to basically, um, it's going to touch the strips. So there's not going to be a gap. You'll see what I mean. Now for the top border, I'm just going to roll out a log. I still have some cornstarch down here from when I rolled out the bottom strip. So just going to use that. And I want to roll it into a log long enough that it can wrap around the top of the popcorn bucket. You don't want it too thick, so I'll show you. You'll understand as I'm doing it. So when you roll out like this, you have to make sure that your fingers are not leaving impressions in here and making little bumps. So you have to try to lightly touch it with your fingers and uh, try to make it even thickness the whole way around. So I'm kind of starting in the middle and pulling my hands out. There's the neighbor's dog, really? Ugh, whatever. And just trying to like get low and see 
if it's thicker in an area or you know like you just have to try to roll it out in even thickness try not to get bumps in it from your fingers trying to get it kind of thin not super thin not super thick because it looks weird if it's too thick and this looks pretty good so i'm going to cut both ends off and now i'll put it on top so now i have a little bit of piping gel here this is actually Wilton piping gel in the CK container because I like this container, but I just find that Wilton piping gel is a little cheaper. I have a little bit, a little paintbrush and I'm getting some piping gel on the paintbrush. Now what I want to do is get piping gel along the top the whole way around. So when I get to one of the strips, I'm getting piping gel just on the inside of the top of the strip. I don't want it to come to the outside because I don't want you to be able to see the piping gel. So just basically on the back half of the top of the strip and the rest of the cake. I'm gonna have my X-Acto knife handy. I'm gonna find the back of my cake, which I can easily find now because that's where this bottom strip started and where the stripes are off a little bit. Grabbing my log and starting at the back. And I'm gonna put this as close to the edge as I can. I'll be able to move it once I get it into place. And just moving it around, trying not to distort the shape. I hope my arm is not in the way right now. Oh my gosh. It's the worst part about making these videos. <laughs> trying to make sure that I'm in frame and I'm not blocking. So this Tylos already has, I'm sorry, this fondant has Tylos mixed in with it. So as I'm lifting it up, it's not stretching and distorting the shape. Where it meets in the back, I'm just gonna make a cut and put it down. I still have to cut that to make it fit. However, now you can see it's on here, but it looks a little jagged. Right, it's, it's going back and forth and bumpy and it doesn't look good. So we wanna refine this. So I'm pulling it out to the outer edge and making sure that it is adhered to the strips. And where it meets here, I'm just gonna get a little bit of piping gel in between and push these together. And then I'm going to step back. I can see that it looks a little imperfect in some areas. So I'm just trying to refine that just so the log looks smoother the whole way around. Like right here, it looks like it's going up a little bit. So I'm trying to push it down, you know, just trying to make it look as even as you can. Now you don't have to worry about making it too perfect because there are, there is going to be popcorn up here and you're not going to be able to tell that this ring isn't perfectly symmetrical. Now we have the ring on. I'm gonna stick this whole thing back in the refrigerator and we're gonna work on the popcorn sign for the front of the bucket. All right, now I wanna cut out this popcorn sign. What I did, I took my ruler and I measured the side of the cake and I, I saw how big I wanted this to be. So this is like almost four inches by two and a half inches tall. So just measure your cake and see how big you want the sign to be. And then I printed it out the size that I wanted it to be. While I was putting the stripes on the cake, I rolled out fondant. I'm just gonna make the sign black and white. So I have black and white and I mixed it with a little bit of Tylos powder like I always do, sprinkle it on, knead it together, roll it out super thin. This is really thin. Um, and let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. You know, the longer it sits, the easier it is to work with. So. I'm going to put this on top. I have an X-Acto knife and of course my wet paper towel in the corner so I can keep wiping that off. And I have my Dresden tool, my favorite tool here. Put this on top of the fondant, making sure that it's completely covering it and it's not hanging off the side. And then I'm just gonna trace the letters. So I'm gonna go right up against the letters and just trace. So I'm pushing hard enough to transfer the line onto the fondant, but you don't want to press too hard and poke a hole into the fondant because it's really difficult to cut around that once you once you put a hole in there. And make sure you get the insides of the letters too. Now 
Now, if you could also see, there's some yellow lines here giving some accents on each of these letters, and I kind of want them on my letters. So what I'm gonna do is just trace, lightly trace those lines as well. This is a part that you can skip, but I kind of like the, the look of it, so I just wanna include that on the letters. Okay, before you lift the paper completely up, keep your hand down, peel it back, make sure all of the lines transferred, and they did. And actually, I'm gonna make this one a little, the outline of this P a little deeper. And then, actually, I forgot the inside of this P. So this is why you always wanna peel it back and make sure that you traced everything before you lift it up. Because if you just lift it up and see that you forgot something, it's so hard to put it back down and figure out um and figure out where to place it again there is something in the fondant here in this p that's freaking stinks so there's like a little black mark here i'm not going to be able to get that out that's going to bother me so i'm going to retrace this p down here good and then i'll just use this for the p sometimes that happens super annoying but it is what it is keep this here for reference so I can see what the letters look like as I'm cutting them. Start with the inside pieces first. And this P is down here. It's a lot easier to cut the inside pieces before you cut it completely out of the fondant so the letters won't move all over the place. And then once I cut, I'm gonna take my Dresden tool or whatever tool you have and just smooth out the cuts. So I'm just pressing the fondant back onto itself. For the center of the O's, I'm just gonna use this number eight tip. It would really depend on how big you cut your letters, of how big of a tip that you're gonna use, but you could use whatever tip that you want. It's just easier to use a round tip to cut round pieces out. And same thing, lift this up with my Dresden tool and just smooth out the inner pieces. Okay, and now just take your X-Acto knife and cut all of the letters out. After I cut anything out of fondant, I like to take my fingers and just smooth the edges because there's always jagged edges after you cut pieces of fondant out. And I know I sound like a broken record, I say it every single time, but just in case there's someone watching me for the first time, I like to explain it every time I do it. Okay, now I have all the letters done and I'm gonna put these on the black background. I'm just gonna place the letters down and then cut the outside around it by looking at the picture. And before I glue it down, just place the letters down on here so I can see where they're going. Pay attention to the picture and see this P is on an angle. The O is up next to it. This P is halfway down the O. The C is on the outside a little bit like a quarter of the way up on the P. The O is just underneath the P. The R, the hump of the R is at the bottom of the P. It doesn't have to be perfect, just to get it in the general area that it's in. So that's kind of what it looks like. I have my water, a little uh, paintbrush. Just pick this up, pick one letter up at a time. Painting the back, a, like a light coating of water. You don't want too much water on here because it's gonna seep out underneath and it's gonna get all over the black fondant. So placing it back down where it was. So use the picture as reference. The P's on an angle, I'm sticking it on an angle. Do the same thing for the rest of the letters. Referring back to the picture to make sure that you're placing them in the right spot. Now that these are all in place, I'm just gonna take my Dresden tool and smooth out any edges. Like this part of the O is a little off. So I just run around the edges and just make it look um, more perfect, if you will. Perfect is subjective, but um, just make it look a little better than it does. Now I wanna pay attention to the picture 
and cut the border, right? So it looks like it's, a, you know, it's evenly spaced around the whole thing. I'm gonna start down here. I'm, I might have to turn this and get a little close. I hope my head doesn't get in the way and make it blurry. But just keep the picture here, use it as reference. So I'm starting here and cutting straight out. And I just wanna cut an even border the whole way around. So here it stops in between the P and the O, right? So you just have to pay attention to what the picture looks like and how you wanna cut the border. And just like always, smoothing out the cuts with my finger. Pressing in, like I can't get into this corner with my finger, so that's why the tools are good just to smooth out all the jagged edges. This part is not necessary, but I wanna do it just to bring these lines out a little more. I have a little bit of petal dust. I'm using um, a, a br chocolate brown color, but you could use whatever color that you want. And I just wanna bring these little lines out a little bit. I have this teeny tiny brush that I actually, I think I cut it myself to make it smaller than it was. Dip it in here and then put it in the lid and then tap it on the lid to get rid of as much as you can. You can actually do a test wipe on the paper to make sure that you don't have too much on here. And then just refine those lines. And I'm not ready to put this on the cake yet. So I have a six inch cake dummy. This is going on a six inch cake. And I wanted to dry with a curve to it so I don't break it when I put it on the cake. So just put it on top of here. I have two push pins in the bottom. I don't know what is all this. I, I don't know if I got some icing on here or whatever it is, but anyway. Just leave this out to dry with a curve with it and we'll put it on the cake a little later. All right, now these have been sitting for about, I don't know, seven hours or so. Um, they are stiff and they're holding their shape. They are sticking to the bottom a little bit, but that's okay because that's where we're gonna put the top part of the popcorn. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I have white marshmallow fondant here. And I'm just gonna roll this out. I'll just use another cutting board to put all the circles on. So, now these are not all the same size. You can see some of them are smaller and some of them are bigger. So you just have to see what size circle cutter you're gonna to wanna to use depending on how big your balls are, if you will. <laughs> so I have these Tico cutters. I have number 808, number 807, and 805 here. I'm gonna use that little one. So to start, I just wanna cut out a bunch of circles in each size. I have this piece of foam here from a Wilton flower former set. It just has cornstarch all over it. And what I wanna do, I have a metal ball tool and I'm gonna put these down on top of the foam. And I just wanna thin them out. So I'm putting the ball half on the fondant, half on the foam, and just going around in a circle to thin it out. And just doing that for all of them. When I lift this up, you can kind of see that there's a flat side because it was sitting down. This is the side that we want to adhere the little circles to. So what I'm gonna do, I hope this makes sense. I wanna get this into a little shape. So I'm gonna take my fingers, it's gonna be kind of like a triangle. I'm gonna pinch one side and then try to pinch the other and push it together which kind of forms like a little, a little pointy square, right? And I wanna do that for all of them. So I'm pinching one side, pinch the other side, and then kind of squeeze it together. All right, now I also have a little paper towel. This tiny paintbrush, and again, I do this a lot when I try to get paintbrushes to come to a teeny tip. I just trim the bristles. Um, I got this, I believe at Michael's or a, a craft store and just took my scissors and just trimmed the bristles so they would come to a point. And I have some brown food coloring. So what I'm gonna do, take the appropriate top. 
So with the bigger balls, I'm gonna wanna put the bigger uh, top on. You can see the smaller ones are kind of too small for this. So you just have to put the right size with the right ball. Get a little bit of water, put it on the back, on the, on the bottom. Place this on top, and then I like to use a ball tool to push it down to adhere it, right? So I'm gonna do that for a few of these and then show you the next step. All right, that's enough for now, and then I just wanna show you what I'm gonna do for the top. So the popcorn, there's usually like a little brown kernel in there so I just I squirted way too much in here but I have some of the just brown I just squirted it in this little bowl and you really don't need a lot you really just want to get the tip wet that did not sound right <laughs> and then I'm just going to carefully just put a dot in the center of each one And that's the process. So I'm not gonna film this cause it took me like 40 minutes to roll out like the 200 balls. So it's gonna probably take me another hour to get all these little toppers on. So I'm gonna do all of that and then I'll show you how to put them on the cake. All right, so I finished the popcorn last night. It probably took me, it was like 90 minutes for me to get all of those little pieces on there and get the brown centers. But I let them sit out overnight and now I'm ready to put them on the cake. All right, I have my cake just up, fresh out of the refrigerator and I have some buttercream icing that's room temperature, my American buttercream, and I'm going to put some buttercream on top. Now, the top of this cake hardly has any icing on it, but it's gonna have a lot at the top because I want it to come up into a mound in the middle. So I wanna make the buttercream like peak in the middle and lower at the edges. And I usually just warn people that there's a lot of icing on the top. So before they cut into the cake, you may want to remove all of the popcorn and some of the icing before you cut the cake because there will be a lot of icing at the top. So I'm bringing the icing all the way to that top strip. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just to show you that I'm going to put something on top of here. So I'm going to remove this icing, but I want to show you if you're not putting anything on top just to make your mound of icing higher at the top. But I'm gonna remove some of this because I'm putting a candy apple at the top. So I just have this Rice Krispie Treat covered apple. And I'm just putting that at the top instead. So I could do a split screen to show you what the popcorn bucket looks like without anything on the top. I actually believe I think I did a number in the top of the popcorn bucket and what I did was take a skewer and just take some chocolate on the back of the skewer to adhere the number to the skewer and then I put that in top on top of the cake. And now I just want to take the little popcorn balls and start to fill it in. Now this icing is still sticky because I just put it on there. So I like to do different, like have it face different angles you know, you see one, one is going up, one's coming forward, one's going in. Now I like to start at the bottom and do a whole row around the bottom and then move up. And then once the bottom row is done, I'll start just filling it in and placing them where you just feel like they look good. So this one doesn't really fit here down into the icing. So I'm just going to take a little bit of piping gel on the back so it can stick to the other pieces of popcorn. And at the top where you're going to want to, if you don't have anything up here, you could just keep filling it up to the top, but where it's going to touch the apple, I'm going to just want to use some piping gel on the back to make sure that it sticks and it's not gonna come off because some of the popcorn is too big to get into these open spots. Even the small ones are kind of big. So 
just using piping gel as needed to stick them together. And there, that looks pretty good. And now I have the popcorn label that was drying on this dummy overnight. And I think I want to adhere it with a little bit of buttercream. Sometimes I feel like it'll stick better than using piping gel. So taking some buttercream and putting it on the back, that's way too much. <laughs> Just make sure that you're not gonna be able to see it stick out from the sides. And find the center and just put that on. Adorable. So now I'm, I still have to finish decorating this cake, but I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator until I'm ready to finish it. So here you go, here is the popcorn bucket cake totally adorable gonna put this down and i will put a split screen here so you can see what the finished product looked like i still have to put the candy and the sunny bunnies on the cake so that is not a finished product however you can do the popcorn bucket just as a regular cake so i just love how this cake looks it's super adorable and easy ish it does say take some time to make all that popcorn and what is really good though is i you always make extra you always want to have extra because I've done it before where it's a pain in the butt where you run out and then you have to make the balls all over again and make those little toppers and you know it's just I always make extra and then I'm just going to store the extra in like a little container like this my boyfriend went to England and he brought me back some some of these amazing shortbread cookies and I just kept this little container but I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and stick them in here until I'm ready to do it again. I think I have another popcorn cake in a couple weeks anyway. So I like to save decorations like that to use on other cakes. I try to keep these videos, like I, I like to explain these in detail, but I don't want to go on forever. So I'm, I'm not able to show you how I do this whole cake. And I feel like every time I post a video with a cake that has other decorations on it, people say, how did you do this? How did you do that? And I'm so sorry that I didn't film the whole cake. But if there's something else that you want to see, let me know and I will film it the next time that I make it. So I think that's it for now. Why, why can't I talk? <laughs> so I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will get back to you. And you can follow me on social media. Why do I always jump? I am on Facebook and Instagram and I have my website and I will link everything below as well. And please check out these videos next and hit the subscribe button if you already haven't and please like this video if you liked it it really helps out my channel thank you so much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you and i will see you on the next one bye